Support for Flying Valley and Builds is brought to you by First and 64th Customs on YouTube, where no diecast is safe. Video Geek Productions. All business, all geek. A generous grant from the Jonathan Von Esch Foundation. And from support from viewers like you. Please like, share, and subscribe. All right, Hanson Speed Shop Budget Gasser Challenge. $5 versus baller. Oh boy. Here we go. Hey there, folks. Chuck here. Welcome to episode 10. Hands and Speed Shop threw out a very cool challenge idea. In fact, it was so good, I decided to make it much harder on myself. But we'll get to that in a minute. The rules were simple. Take an American car pre-1970 and make it into a gasser-style dragster for $5 or less. Also, obviously, it couldn't already be a gasser casting. So since he immediately found my loophole, it was back to the drawing board. First, I had to make this project harder on myself. I decided, A, I wanted to challenge myself to a normal no limitation build, throwing everything in my arsenal into building the best gasser I could possible, and B, take the same casting and then do the actual challenge. So I dove deep into that and didn't really estimate how much time it was going to take to do an actual build on five dollars. So there's a lot of uh, stuff that the budget saves time on. And because I wanted to actually release this on the day it was due, this is going to be a two parter now. So we're going to get started on the part that was actually due today, which is the budget part of the build. And we're getting started with this old high raker Hot Wheels 1963 Corvette. I had a bunch of double castings that met the criterion and I put them up on my Patreon page and my dear friend Christian over at First and 64th Productions as one of my top patrons cast the deciding vote for the 63 Corvette, which was of course the one in the worst condition and the biggest challenge because I'm building a barn find gasser and I've never weathered fiberglass before. So that was an added fun bit. So yeah, I was already starting out with a pretty big challenge ahead. This particular casting I found in my in-laws sandbox. It was one of my brother's in-laws toy cars that's been around for 30 plus years and has gone through now a second generation of nieces and nephews and grandkids and was just sitting out in the sandbox at their house. In keeping with reality and budgets, this car is going to be officially tallied at zero dollars because, well, look at it. This is not something that anyone would spend any money on. So that gave me a little bit of an advantage in that I had something to play with. So here we go. Let's see what I can do. Let's boogie. Initially, I started building the car side by side, but as soon as I cracked open the budget car, I realized just how much of a challenge was ahead of me. This thing was filthy, caked with dirt and sand, and I also had to come up with a solution for the missing rear chunk of the high raker. Fortunately, a good friend of mine solved that problem. But before that happened, I had to get some paint off. And since I don't have access to my usual aircraft stripper on a budget, I raided my garage for some everyday household items that most houses would have. A common household drill with a common wire wheel and a free toothbrush from the dentist to get everything cleaned up. Then it was off to my wife's side of the bathroom to grab a nail clipper and a nail file and use those to get rid of the casting lines. Fortunately for this build, I had another windfall come my way in that my friend Ben gave me a 40s Woody that was also a high rakers. So I was able to borrow a few pieces of this valuable gift that he gave me for zero dollars, including the engine assembly in the front and the wheel assembly in the back. I also found this tea bucket, courtesy of my brother Justin, that was missing an engine and it was also free. The key part that this tea bucket provided was that it had rubber tires and wheels that were perfect for a gasser build. So thank you, Justin, and thank you, Ben. So we're still at zero dollars and continuing in that theme of trying to use everything I had around the house that wasn't related to car building that you would find in a normal house to get the job done. I took a hacksaw and started on the engine for the Woody, getting it to a size that would work and found an old pencil and made some key marks without the liberty of using my calipers like I would usually do. 
and a household drill to to get started on the engine opening. This may be breaking the rules a little bit. I found a file in my garage that I'm not even sure where it came from, but it seems close enough to a kind of household item that you would have, you know, something that your grandfather had in his toolbox that's been knocking around. So now I present you with 11 minutes of filing in 10 seconds. And there we have it, a perfect-ish opening for the engine. I then drilled out the front of the blower so that it looked a little bit more realistic and I used a box cutter because X-Acto blades would count as a budget item. And I figure most houses have a box cutter. Using that file again because, hooray metal chassis, I know I'm killing the Hot Wheels collectors out there for chopping up a high raker, but this thing was shot. Flattened things out so I could add some gasser style axles to it. I also found lying around this old tube of school glue that who knows how old it is, but it was still liquid enough to get some kind of gel out of it. I was able to use it to secure the engine in place. A strike against this casting, besides being incredibly difficult to make a barn find vet, is that it also had this rear wheel molded into the interior, which would not be on a gasser. So I busted out the hacksaw again and carefully filed off. Please, please do not try this at home, by the way. Filed off the spare tire. This is not how to safely use a hacksaw at all. Then it was a quick file with the emery board and fishing a cereal box out of the recycle bin to make the rear package tray and a little more school glue to hold it in place. Another thing that gassers tend to have is a roll bar and of course there wasn't one in this casting so I had to make my own. I found a Christmas tree ornament hanger, another thing that would be very common in most households. And if you don't celebrate Christmas, a paper clip would also do. And using some household pliers to bend it into shape and the nail clippers to clip it, I had myself a handy dandy roll bar. A little more school glue to hold the roll bar in place. Some may call this cheating, but I have yet to be in a house that doesn't have spray paint of some kind. And this was the first can that I found that would remotely work. <laughs> I was actually looking for flat black spray paint because that's something that is certainly in every home, but it turned out it was not in my home. So instead of going out and buying some, I just grabbed the most generic can of Rust-Oleum primer that I had on the shelf and gave my paint something to stick to. And speaking of paint, it was time to go spend my $5. So I went down to the local hobby emporium and even with their handy 40% off coupon, I didn't see anything worth spending my money on that would benefit my budget. So it was off to the big box store and the Dollar Tree, and eventually Ollie's, which is somewhere between the big box store and the Dollar Tree, through an amazing stroke of luck, found exactly what I needed to get the job done. Ollie's was the best find of all because it coincidentally happened to be during Ollie's promotional push where they give everything in the store a 15% discount on top of their already low prices, and I found this interior painting kit from testers that who knows how long it's been sitting on the shelf, but these things were old looking. So it was $2.50. I got these watercolor pencils from Dollar Tree, this weird paintbrush set from Dollar Tree, and a bottle of flame red paint from the big box store. Using another trick of the trade, I grabbed some Fantastic out of our cleaning cabinet and poured a little of the flame red into an old applesauce cup and mixed well and spread all over the model. The Fantastic does a great job of leveling the paint and getting rid of brush strokes. The combination of the white primer with the red paint really did a good job of making the paint look extra faded and the high parts on the car, having the white show through a little bit, ended up lending itself very well to the weathered fiberglass look that I did later. The paintbrushes for a buck were actually not that bad. The three quarter inch was ridiculously big for what I needed, but it did give me nice smooth lines along with the Fantastic, and the little guy ended up being great for details. The testers kit really took me back because it came with one of the famous plastic testers paintbrushes and made me realize as a kid why model building was so hard because as a child I trusted that the testers paintbrushes that came with the paint sets were the best possible brushes you could have for this kind of job. So yes, yeah, the naivety of childhood discouraging me early on, but it was kind of fun to work within that challenge again. 
This paint set was actually really nice for what I needed because it had a gunmetal, it had gloss red, it had silver, a uh, white, a gray, and a leather brown. So it had pretty much all the colors I needed to get my basics down. Once I got everything painted though, I needed to seal it up so I didn't ruin it with my washes from the watercolor. So I needed a clear coat and I'm out of budget. So I grabbed that school glue again and mixed it in with some water. Another quick and dirty trick to make an easy clear coat, at least if you don't mind a matte finish, is some glue and water and boom, brush on clear coat. It was back to the bathroom to grab some Q-tips to make some axles and into the pantry to get some baking soda to speed up the gluing process as I had found a tube of crazy glue that hadn't sealed itself shut. So that was another added bonus to this build. Sprinkled out the baking soda and grabbed a pair of tweezers from the bathroom again. Place the baking soda, smear a little super glue with a toothpick, which is another item that most houses would have, or you could visit your local barbecue and grab five or six. So I consider that a zero dollar add-on. And you got yourself a couple of gasser axles. I ended up using toothpicks for paint a lot more than I thought I would. I cut the axles from the tea bucket and promptly lost one of them. So I found a paper clip and made another axle. Also zero dollars because Paper clips just exist. I'm not sure where they come from. They just come into houses and stay there. And every drawer you open up, there's at least a 50% chance there's a paper clip inside. The high raker back wasn't quite accepting of the Q-tip. And it turned out that putting the Q-tip axle on the outside of the high raker made it way too high, even on the lowest setting. So I had to chop in a little bit onto the plastic, further enraging all the collectors watching this episode right now. And Modified that to make it fit. The tires were too black and the emery board didn't really do a good job of weathering them. It was a really hard rubber. So I ended up just watering down some of the gray from the tester's kit and brushing it on. As I thinned it down, it gave a good kind of dust effect on the wheels. I then took that and added a layer of gray wash to the gun metal from the same kit that I painted on the chassis to give it some added weathering and my friends the q-tips were back to help with dabbing on paint it wasn't quite all i needed though to get the right effect on the body here's where i'm really glad i had worked with the ak interactive pencils already because if i hadn't i wouldn't have even thought to buy the watercolor pencils from the dollar tree and they really came in handy for doing things like providing uh this blackish filter to the interior to kind of grime it up and you're going to see me use those a lot more later. I also gave the shifter ball a bit of red from the red pencil because I guess red shifter knobs are now kind of my thing. It's just a nice way to add a bit of interest in the middle of an interior. I was going to need more than Q-tips and the three paint brushes though. So I waltzed into the kitchen and borrowed our dish sponge and took a few pieces of it to start stippling on some white and gray to get a weathered fiberglass look. I looked online for some inspiration and Auto Evolution had this really cool 59 Corvette barn find and it had exactly the kind of look I was going for and it had this really cool uh, number eight on the back of it and I wanted to kind of replicate the faded racing numbers on it and it had eight. It had the number eight on it so I made this car number 18 just to make it different and because 18 is a very easy number to write, at least with a toothpick. And since I didn't have any budget for decals, I knew I was gonna have to hand paint any graphics that came on here. And the paint brushes that I had at my disposal were not the best. So that chipped and faded numbering look was perfect for what I was going for. It was actually a lot of fun to weather fiberglass or to create the weathered fiberglass look. It's an interesting mix of whites and browns and grays and fortunately that was exactly what I had available to me and I used a little bit of that gun metal to provide the remnants of decals that would have been peeling and cracked and flaking off and I filled in the wheel wells and just kind of continued applying whites and grays all over the car and used a lot of wet on wet technique to let the whites and grays kind of blend together. I used the gloss red to reach in there and get the taillights. It's not very visible, but I know it's there and it does have a shine difference. And I gave it a little bit of a flag on the rear emblem. Then it was time to make a wash and 
Fortunately, again, I knew a little bit about working with watercolor pencils and I knew I could make a wash just with some tap water and the black colored pencil. And it actually worked surprisingly well. I was able to go over the whole car, apply a black wash. I did have to apply it several times because it did dry lighter than I would have preferred, but after a couple of coats it was fine. And then it was time to put everything together and get started on finding a gas tank. So this time I raided my daughter's bead collection and found this one that almost fit perfectly between the split bumpers on the Corvette. Used the rest of the Christmas ornament hanger, covered it in gray paint as a primer, and then dabbed over that with silver to give it a mottled aluminum look. And added a little bit more wash. I noticed the back had that tab style hookup and I wanted to cover it so I made a license plate for it out of that cereal box again and some of the blue colored pencil in this pen that I found. I was trying to do five bucks with an X as the license plate but uh, the pen wasn't working that well and at that point I was like no I'm stretching the rules far enough already I'm just gonna roll with what I got. Then it was time to do some rust and grime effects and I did that with making another black wash and adding in some red to make it more brown. I think I put a little yellow in there too to kind of orange it up some. And with that, I was almost out of time for this build. So it was time to move on to my three vine mice build. And keeping with the theme, I skipped my decals and my fancy pen and did my logo and the number 0010 in toothpick using the testers kit. So one more time, here's what we started out with a completely wasted free old Hot Wheels car that has definitely seen better days. And we tried to give it a new lease on life. And here's what we ended up with. A barn find gasser in need of restoration, waiting for the right person to come along. Not unlike this original car has been sitting since the early 80s. So this was a really fun challenge. I want to thank Hanson Speed Shop for throwing it down. I also want to thank my patrons for making me do this ridiculous project. As you saw my bandit level patrons at the beginning, I've also got my Rockford level patrons in Mid-Island Custom Diecast, thanks Evan, and my amazing wife Carolyn, who has graciously given me the space and time to borrow a bunch of stuff from her and make this ridiculous video in a very short period of time. I'd also like to thank my Douglas level patrons, Drew Ranson Raves Podcast, Jordan Kleinen, and Curtis Crafts on YouTube. If you'd like to support the channel, I would really appreciate it. Everything that the patrons donate goes straight back into this channel. The $5 that was used in this budget build was provided by them. And in part two, you'll see what they provided for the baller part of the project and the other Corvette. So stick around for that. That will be coming in early August. Once again, I'd like to thank everybody here for your help and your support and liking and commenting and subscribing and all the amazing growth that we've had on this channel recently. It's been really encouraging and I'm incredibly humbled and grateful to all of you. I'm really excited about this next project that I've got to wrap this up and start editing on immediately because I decided I would try and do two challenges in one day and today is that day. So I'm going to jump over to episode 11. Please uh, hit the bell notification if you want to see that one. It'll be coming out later today. Once again, thanks everybody for coming along with me for the ride. So until next time, stay fresh, cheese bags. Bye.